Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Right Conversation with Shari Pheasant, where we talk about the hard stuff. I get into the real good things that you really want to hear when you listen in to conversations with people. Look, communication isn't the biggest problem on a team. The biggest problem on a team is not having the right conversation soon enough. And the right conversation is really about five factors. Talking to the right person about the right thing at the right time with the right tone and intonation and with the right intentions. So join me for the right conversations that I have with my guests and you get to hear all about the hard stuff. You're going to love this. So let's dig in. Hi, everybody. Shari Pheasant here again for The Right Conversation. Today, I have somebody very special with me, um, Miss Sherry Hill, also known as the Wealth Protection Diva. Now, she is the president and CEO of Sage International, an amazing leading company that provides financial education, business development, and wealth protection strategies to small business owners, entrepreneurs, investors, professionals, and nonprofit founders. She's been doing it for over 30 years. Sherry knows that when you are in business, that in order to win, you have to be tough, think big, and become skilled. And as a gutsy, successful business owner, creative mentor to many, she loves giving back. She also serves on two nonprofit boards as a national speaker, best-selling author, and of the she's the best-selling author of Incorporate and Get Rich and the host of the weekly broadcast, Sherry Hill Radio Show. Sherry, I am so welcome. I love welcoming a friend, a mentor, a business advisor, and an amazing woman leader in our um, community to the podcast today. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Well, thank you, Shari. I always love hanging out with you. <laughs> I like hanging out with you too. And now we get to do it in public. I don't know that that might is a good thing, right? Yeah, right. Well, we've tried that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the right conversation with Shari Fez. And we can talk the Sherry and Shari show. We're really making it happen, right? It's good. Um, you know, you've been a woman in business for a very long time. It's funny. Um, you know, I asked my podcast guest and I asked Sherry, what do you want to talk about? And it's, you know, one of the topics is women in business. And so then I take time and we looked it up and I found this quote right before our call. And um, it is from an Asian woman who was the vice president. Um, and she remaining nameless, but she said, a president of a tech company said something that stuck with me once. She said, women are hired. So this is a female tech company president. Women are hired for what they have done. Men are hired for what they can become. Women have to have a proven record but men do not. All right, Sherry, let's dig into that conversation a little bit. All right. <laughs> right? Starting off with a bang, we are. Well, I maybe agree, maybe not agree, but, you know, women, you know, fortunately, we are able to focus on a lot of different things, right? And so we have the ability to manage households, manage companies, manage families. And when I say manage, I mean, we're typically the ones that are filling out the calendar with here's all the things we need to do. And so we come in already with good experience on just, I never use the word multitasking because I don't believe in that philosophy because <laughs> we really don't multitask, but, um, it's just, it's important that uh, women stand firm in what you do know and bring to the table the skill sets that you do have. And it's interesting to me because there's a lot of skill sets that women have that they don't even know they have, but are really valuable for business. Oh, tell me one. Tell me one. Let's tell everybody one right now. What is one skill set that we have that you, because you're you're brilliant, that you see that women aren't bringing to the table? Uh, oftentimes, it's uh, parenting is a skill set. Oftentimes, it can be that we are um, intuitive. We are better communicators. And mm. so I used to teach a whole segment in the nonprofit world about, you know, what makes you a good board member. And I have this whole list of what I call spiritual assets that mm. most people aren't familiar with, yet we have them. You know, what are those things that you have done in your lifetime? Hobbies and, and all kinds of things that really build skills that work in the business world. 
Mm -hmm. And and you mentioned parenting. So I, I just want to speak to that a little bit because I think there's some people that are like parenting. Now that work. Well, parenting requires patience. It requires you to be repetitive. You are supporting somebody else's development, which means you have to be repetitive. Oh, <laughs> right. I work with leaders. They are not willing. Like I told them, how come they can't get it? I said, how many times? Well, I told them once they can't get it the first. No, no, they can't because you're telling them five things. And so are 10 people. So now 10 people with five things to one person, you're asking them to remember 50 things and they just got here. It's their first week. No, they can't remember it. Yes. Yeah. And, and one of the things I learned many, many years ago from one of uh, my mentors is the quality of my communication is the quality of the response I get. And this was actually out of a, uh, he wrote a book on parenting, but then he brought it into the business world. And so I've always carried that with me because if I'm not getting the result or the response or the anything, then it it's me as the communicator. Am I being effective? Am I being clear? Am I being direct? Am I being all the things that are gonna help the receiver take what I'm sharing or teaching or requesting and be able to uh, act on it. Absolutely. Right. I always say as the leader goes, so goes the company. Mm -hmm. um, and usually when I say that to the leader of the company, I get the blank stare for a minute. <laughs> like, wait, is she saying that what I'm complaining about in my company is me? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Because you're the one leading. Right. Well, and, and I found through the years because, uh, you know, especially, you know, I'm, I've always been in industries that have a lot of men in them, right? <laughs> and so um, yes. oftentimes because, you know, when I was young, they never truly accepted or believed that I had the amount of knowledge that I have, right? Because I, I worked hard to gain the knowledge. I studied. Yes. I took classes, I did all the kind of things that you need to do, you know, a perpetual learner still to this day. And even to this day, even though I've been doing what I've been doing now for 31 years as Sage International, I still get questions sometimes, really. But oddly enough, it's usually more by women than men. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Unconscious bias. I think women have it for women, right? Because we're in that boat. So we automatically right? We carry that with with us when in our relationships. And I tell everybody, any box you have that you have stored that you're carrying with you, it carries through all of your relationships. So I could see that, Sherry. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting to me. Always has been, but. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and, and I, I, I love your perspective um, because we've gotten into a lot where women are um, you know, it's been a change. I always tell everybody, look, it's never been so popular to be a woman. Um, and women have never had as much support or recognition or a movement towards that. Let's, let's put it that way. Right. Cause we don't have a glass ceiling. We have a broken rung. Um, and it's about addressing that and getting women into mid management, um, so that we have them to promote. And what companies have done over the last five years is they just take a woman and plop her into the CEO role, right. To get her there. What I love that you talked about is there's a lot of development for, what we like to label brokenness in women. And really, there's so many women that are successful like yourself at what you do. You're well-known internationally. You're a best-selling author, all of those things. Um, you have an amazing company. And so it's more about development and pouring into you. Speak to me a little bit about that perspective that you have on that. Yeah, absolutely. So as I said, one of my passions is lifelong learning. And so as I work through what it was that I needed to know and understand in working with entrepreneurs, setting up companies, is so I cherry picked my education. I never wanted a degree. I don't have a PhD. I don't have any of that, but I- Piled high and deep. Did you say PhD? Piled high and deep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, but I cherry picked my education in that I took every legal class that I could take through the university. I took accounting. I took all kinds of things for where I was at in my particular point in life that said, if I knew this or more about this, how is it going to help me? So this continual investment in self-improvement, self-education, and really reaching out to, at certain times, the right mentors, 
the right groups, the right seminars. I always figured I'd die in a workshop with a pen in my hand, you know? And so uh, it, it- You'll be 115 when you do, I know right? it. it. So it's always been important for me to really target an area and so just as some examples, so there was a period of time where I said, I really need to know more about nonprofits. So I, for five years, I delved into the realm of nonprofits in serving on boards and in going into uh, learning more about private family foundations. I mean, just anything mm -hmm. that I could do to figure out what is it that I can learn because I'm really an educator, Shari. So I want to be able to tell people, here's all the options you have. Here's what you need to understand. Do I have to be an expert in it? No, I know who the expert is, but I have enough knowledge and information to answer questions and guide people in the right direction. So that was one period of time, right? Then mm -hmm. series LLCs or um, LLCs when those first showed up. I mean, there's so many things that I just target as uh necessary in the world of business that I, I think I really do have a PhD in one, the school of hard knocks, but really um, masters in marketing and everything you need in order to run a successful company. Well, you've seen so many industries and the businesses and the foundations and the frameworks, right? And, and, and the mission statements that mean something versus the mission statements that are just shallow conversations, right? Um, and I, I I remember I took a class with you at TMCC. Gosh, that had to be a dozen years ago, Sherry. And when you were teaching um, at, 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 at a class on business there. And I know that that's been a foundational work that I continue to go back to and look at. It's so valuable. And what you offer, um, you know, referred a lot of clients to you as well. And everybody is just thrilled with the amount of knowledge that you have. So when you pile it up as high as you have it, right, it is wide and deep, which is really nice. Well, and, and a lot of this too, you know, you grow a company for 30 years. I mean, there, there were years where um, I had some really hard times. And so mm -hmm. everything I teach and speak about and share is based on my own personal experience. And that's what kind of makes me really unique when working with people that want to start companies is because I've pretty much done, experienced, been through um, whatever it is you potentially are going to encounter in your future, right? I'm looking back now, but I mean, I had some really, really tough years. All right. You know where I'm going with this. Yeah. Tell me a story. What is a really tough experience that you had and what was the lesson you took away from it? Because, right, it's not the problem. It's how we handle the problem. And I know that you always pull education as an educator out of it. So share with us a little bit so we can see your underbelly. <laughs> All right. So when I was back, uh, it was quite a few years ago and a uh, national speaker. And so I traveled a lot. Right. So I had a team around me here and I had a bookkeeper who every time I flew back into town, I was here, you know, for a week. How's everything going? All is good. And uh, I left town again to go to some big event in Texas. And all of a sudden I get this notification that all my checks the company checks are bouncing at the bank. Now, mind you, I'm 2000 miles away. Oh my so, goodness. So anyway, I'm like, what is going on? And, you know, it was over a weekend. And so I'm thinking, you know, when I come back in on Monday, do I have a company? Do I have, what, what is going on? So anyway, long story short, uh, she had, she was not qualified to be a bookkeeper at the level that we were expecting her to be a bookkeeper. And so she was paying things like uh, the American Express bill, but not the rent or the payroll taxes or. And so what it taught me is that you cannot depend on any one person for anything. You as the business owner, you have to have your finger in everything. Doesn't mean you're doing all the work. I wasn't going to put the bookkeeper hat back on. But right, I not on it, but in it, right, but on yeah. it. There's a difference between in I, it and on it. I took a portion of it back so I could really build what is the process, what do I need to understand, and it took me 
probably a good seven years to dig out of that hole because by the time all is said and done, Shari, that lesson cost me almost $1 million. <gasps> wow. Well, when you're big, you go big or go home. <laughs> right. right? I mean, that, that was a long haul. And through that, that entire process, I kept saying, is this the end of Sage International? Am I, are we supposed to be in business still? And as I was thinking those thoughts, the phone would ring and somebody would say, I need you to help me. I need you to set up my company. And so we kept, so it just kept being Going. reinforced that I'm supposed to still be here doing this. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, I, uh, there are times where you dig way down deep and go, well, what would I do? Am I going to go be an employee somewhere? Who would hire me? Right. I'm unemployable. <laughs> and so good. that oh, I'm not a good employee. I get it. <laughs> it Reconfirmed the fact that no, you need to stay where you are and keep doing what you're doing. And uh, yeah, that was a brutal lesson. So when people come to me and want to start businesses and oh, it's oh, it's not, it's not unicorns and rainbows, people. No. And for those of you that lose a hundred bucks or lose a few thousand bucks or do the right, think about this story. Um, you're all right. Get up, get going. That's what entrepreneurism really well, is. And about. I tell people they're, you know, having problems with partners and I say, well, what, what's, what did that lesson cost you? Oh, maybe 20, 30,000. I said, feel lucky. If that was the cost of that lesson, feel yep. blessed. Because let me tell you about my million dollar lesson, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> was that, that was before you, the book, Incorporate and Get Rich? Oh, no, no. This was probably 15, 17 years ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was bankrupt. Wow. Resiliency. It happens. Well, you know, your high tech companies go through it. Your small businesses go through it. Um, I think it's a lot. And then you also spoke about, you know, you're a woman, basically a man's world most of the time because um, you work in those industries. Um, do you have any memories or stories about some like crucial moments that happen? I think, you know, I, I talk with a lot of women and again, right, you and I are the pick yourself up girls, right? But there are some women that they, it just, they get, right? It's it's fight, flight, or freeze. Um, you and I are like, put them up, let's go. Um, but there are some women and it's, it's there's some men as well, right? So let's not stereotype it. Yeah. But they're the flight or freeze. So any thoughts about what you could share about your experience that would be helpful for somebody listening? That there's a lot of women working in men's worlds right now. Well, the real key for me has always been be solid in your own self-esteem. I mean, if you know stuff and you're comfortable with what you're doing, no one can deflate you, right? <clears throat> I challenge anyone knowledge to knowledge with my knowledge with their knowledge. In my industry, I know nothing about being a chef. I know, you know, those things. So I'm not going to even compete in that realm. But if I am solid in my knowledge and I'm comfortable sharing in that knowledge, and then anybody that wants to challenge me, I'm fine with the challenge. But let's be clear, I got 31 years in this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I get, you know, whippersnapper, young attorneys or financial advisors or CPAs are going to teach me a lesson. Right. And it's like, guess again. So, so what do you do? What do you do when that happens? When you have somebody in there, right? That something's going on with you. I just listen. I just listen. And then when they're done, then I'll come back and go, let's talk fact, 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 Ooh. fact. And let's so talk fact. So <laughs> you, it, it's kind of like that where you let somebody just spin it out. Like when someone's mad, right? Um, a great um, a thing to a great strategy is that don't interrupt them. Don't like when you, when they, declassify you or whatever it is. Um, you just let them keep going because a, they need, they'll run out at some point and you get all the information that they have instead of part of it. So you know what you're working with. B, you actually got time to sit there and think, <laughs> right? Right. And I, and I get it. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be in the moment, listen to the moment. Don't listen to respond, listen to understand. I think you can listen to understand and still it guides you to your answer for them and what you need to say versus well, I, taking I it off. For their, their tone, 
and mm. and you know i'm i'm always accused i have a tone right because it's direct it's like we're direct you know, communicators. Mince words i you know have a edge to it and so there are times where people <laughs> every one time i was on i know i love that's why i love you oh <laughs> This call, I think it was last year, and this guy was talking to me in nonprofit and da 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 da. And, and finally, as he finished and all the stuff that he was doing, I said, um, Let me just share one thought with you right now. And I said, What you're doing isn't going to work. And it's almost as if you're committing fraud, right? And so, blah, 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 blah. And then later, he's like, You know, you're, you're really hostile. And I'm like, what? Hostile. I said, you ain't seen hostile, buddy. I said, <laughs> this is fact. Let's go fact, fact, fact. So right? you were having tough conversations and he just didn't want to hear it. And, but he, he took it as I, I was being hostile because again, my, what, one of the things, and this is why my clients absolutely love me and those that don't confidence that's confidence ladies and gentlemen well, i just want you to know that in, in business i always feel like there's a sense of urgency right we don't have months to make decisions and opportunities don't last months and so everything's kind of like you got to do now you got to make get your facts get your info make a decision but make it now not drag it out and drag it out and so that's kind of my tone you know it's sense of urgency what is your decision da, 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 da. and so if someone of course they were from the south <laughs> slow pace right and carrying a mint and julep all that. right and and in his words because i have this edge and this tone a sense of urgency because he needed help he needed it now stop doing what you're doing because you're almost committing fraud fix it and I'm okay if people don't like me. It's tough luck. It's like, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you options. But if you don't want to hear the truth. You have to, though. You're in business, right? You can't joke about them making fiscally irresponsible decisions. You can't joke about, right, like, I want to make my revenue. Well, then focus on what your revenue is, right? Making sure when you go to speak that you know what the follow-up is and that you guide your audience in that. Just all of those different things. Um, I, your experience just offers so much knowledge and hands-on about what's really happening. And I love what you said that you, you share with everybody from your own mistakes and your own experience, right? I find that I funny. I the experiences of all my clients because I hear a lot of stories and what people are doing and what they're going through True. and how how is it going to be solved or not solved and things like that and so kind of back to my point shari is why most men are cool you know i can talk like it but that's where women sometimes struggle <laughs> Oops. Oh. Puppy. Oh. hey sh <laughs> put you out okay sorry right you know um, right because, because of this you know, intensity, I'll call it, that um, they sometimes struggle. So, mm. but if they're confident and, you know, I'm, I'm here to build everybody up. I'm not here to deny anybody their dream, uh, but let's talk about it. Let's make informed decisions and let's make sure you um, are doing the right things at the right time. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's a big decision in a business, there's so much, especially when you're just starting an entrepreneur and you work it with a lot of startups where you've got to wear so many hats, but which hat do I prioritize? And I think those are just really tough conversations because you're dealing with somebody, if you're an entrepreneur, right, you've gotten into that because you have a passion. You feel like you're serving your calling or right, that you've gotten out of a regular corporate job or whatever that is to do something that matters to you and means something. And so it gets very personal. And I see you just being willing to have those tough conversations with people that look, you're making a mistake and it's a helpful conversation, but it just gets so personal. Is maybe that what you think happens on the other end of things when you oh, talk absolutely. with people? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most of us don't want to be told that we're in failure before we begin. Well, I'm sure you've loved this conversation and you can tell that it's not over yet. So, Join me on the inside in the next podcast where we're going to continue our conversation.